Lord Jesus. We have been waiting for your return for over 20 years. Amen. But my spirit is in darkness now. I cannot feel your presence. Amen. The sermons I preach have no illumination. Even my initial confidence and love have disappeared. Amen. Lord, please do not forsake us. Lord Jesus, even though you have forgiven us for our sins, we have yet to attain the holiness. Amen. We still frequently lie and commit sins. All of us are miserably poor and unfit to see your face. Amen. Lord, I long for your arrival. Amen. In an instant, in the blink of an eye, let our lowly body be transformed. Amen. Make us all holy. Amen. And bring us to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Oh Lord, we long, we long for your arrival. And in an instant, in the blink of an eye, let our holy body be transformed. Make all us holy and bring us into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. And also, also with you. Thank the Lord. Let's turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verses 7 to 14. When prophesying his return, the Lord Jesus said, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. And then shall the end come. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank, Thank the, the Lord. Lord. Brothers and sisters, disasters are now even more intense. The world's increasingly dark and evil. People follow the worldly trends and are obsessed with carnal pleasure. None practice the Lord's word, nor care about God's intention. Indeed. The religious communities, increasingly desolate. Varied iniquities gradually increase. In all the disasters and trials, people are indeed revealed. That's truly the case. Indeed. For years, I've sought the work of the Holy Spirit and met many pastors and elders. What disappoints me is, Many pastors and elders are following worldly trends. They covet money, pursue vanity and status, and struggle for power. They engage in mutual judgment and indiscriminate attacks. It's true. It is so true. These pastors and elders flaunt biblical knowledge and theological theories purely to show off, so they may gain followers. And to usurp the sheep of the Lord without really caring about their life. It's true. These grave iniquities cause many believers to become weak and even pessimistic in their faith. <sighs> many people have withdrawn. That's true. I can see many have left. It shows me that the Lord's word has been fulfilled. 
It is now the darkest period in the last days. The Lord will bring us to the kingdom of heaven soon. Amen. Amen. Everyone, at this critical point of greeting the Lord, we must read scripture and pray more. Fellowship the Lord's word as well as practice it. Amen. Amen. We must do our best to spread the gospel and bear witness for the Lord so we'll be praised by him. Mm. It is the only way to enter the kingdom of heaven when he comes. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank, Thank the Lord. Lord. Hey, Sister Sue, the world grows more chaotic, as if the catastrophe is imminent. I just don't know what it is. My heart drifts ever further from the Lord. My enthusiasm and love has been grinded out. I now ask what I've gained from believing in the Lord. It feels like I've gained nothing. I don't know how to practice and experience the Lord's word to date, let alone how to follow the Lord's way. That's true for us all. Whenever I think about my condition, I feel so discouraged. I suspect that when the Lord comes, won't we all be, won't we be abandoned by the Lord? Oh, why would you say that? What a thing to suspect. It just can't be. We should have faith. Frankly speaking, I have no confidence we'll be brought to the kingdom of heaven when the Lord comes. How can you say that? Oh, yeah. The Lord is faithful. Yes, we must believe that the Lord is faithful. I often wonder why, having believed in the Lord for many years, my faith and love for the Lord is now diminishing. The importance of the Lord in my heart is lost. I often lie and covet carnal pleasure, daily pondering how to make yet more money I obsess over the mundane and don't know how to practice the Lord's word. In meetings, I just discuss literal meanings, mimicking others' words. And at the same time, I constantly sin and repent every day. Isn't this someone who lives in sin? Yes, that's the case. Indeed, yes, indeed. Although my sins were forgiven, I've not freed myself from the bondage of sin. And yet, I still hope to enter the heavenly kingdom when the Lord comes. When I read the Lord Jesus' words, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. I feel shame in my heart. And I wonder, would the Lord really appear to those like us when he comes? I'm deeply worried we'll be abandoned by the Lord. I am in the same condition. The Lord promised to return and bring us into the kingdom of heaven. How could we be abandoned? Brothers and sisters, these are real problems that we all are discussing. When we believe it's true, our sins are forgiven. Yet although we enjoy the grace and blessings of the Lord, we are still susceptible to being controlled and bound by sin. We've not practiced many of the Lord's words, Yes. let alone attained holiness. We keep the Lord Jesus just in name, without keeping the Lord's way. We don't follow the Lord's commandments. We don't meet the Lord's requirements when we believe like this. If we look to God's words, you shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Then it's true. We are unfit to enter the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it is true indeed. However, should we lose faith in the Lord merely because we all continue to sin and fail to practice his word? No, surely we should not. It's true. We should have faith. In fact, this problem existed in the church during the age of the apostles. Let us turn to the book of Romans and see what Paul said in chapter 10, verses 9 to 10. Who will read for us? I would like to read... Great. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Amen. 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 Now, chapter 11, verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Amen. Amen. Therefore, 
We needn't be pessimistic due to our habitual sin mm. and fear that the Lord will despise and forsake us. What we need is faith in the Lord. Amen. In His eyes, we're not viewed as sinners because a long time ago, all our sins were forgiven. Amen. Amen. For our faith in the Lord, we are all deemed righteous and will enter the kingdom of heaven when He comes. Amen. Amen. Right. According to the Lord's word, we're not fit, but according to Paul, we are and have hope to be saved. That's right. It's true. Everyone, let us read more of Paul's word. Let's turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 20, and read together. For, For our conversation is in heaven, from where also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like to his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Amen. Now turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. Thank the Lord. After hearing Paul's word, aren't we more confident now? Yes. yes. Brothers and sisters, what is meant by changing within an instant? The image of our flesh will be changed instantly when the Lord descends and appears to us. We'll be lifted to the sky to meet with the Lord. And then, we'll no longer suffer from the bondage of sin because the Lord is omnipotent. Amen. Amen. When the Lord returns, our images will change and will be brought to the Lord. At that time, we will be completely holy. Amen. Amen. That is the effect of God's redemption and love. Everyone, if we do not have such faith, how can we be raptured? Don't you agree with this? Yes. yes. Thank, Thank the Lord. Lord. Thank, Thank the Lord. Lord. That is what Paul says, and we should have faith. It is just as was written. God says, You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. But we are sinners after all. We haven't attained holiness. When the Lord comes, will we be transformed instantly and brought to the kingdom of heaven? Why, no matter how many times we've sinned, hasn't the Lord forgiven us? When we're deemed sinless by the Lord, aren't we holy already? Our image will instantly change when the Lord arrives. Right. Wouldn't it be great if the Lord changes our image? Then we'd never experience the taste of death or even old age and sickness. It would be blissful. People like Paul and Peter could perhaps change their image. I don't think it's possible for habitual sinners like us to change our image. Zhang Hao. Mom hasn't slept yet. <sighs> Mom, you're still awake? Drinking again? I had dinner with friends. I couldn't refuse. I didn't want to offend them, so I drank a little. <sighs> Mom. Zhang Hao, Lu Chang. Both of you believe in the Lord. You are Christians but you still whine, dine, and frolic with the unbelievers. In what ways do you resemble Christians? Hey, still going to work tomorrow? Listen up. You do not have any piety, just like the unbelievers. You're addicted to the mundane world. You covet carnal pleasure. How could this be pleasing to the Lord? Mom. Both of you, confess and then repent to the Lord. 
The Lord will return at any time. If you both continue to be depraved, how will you qualify to enter the kingdom of heaven? <sighs> Ma, don't you always say, as long as we recognize the Lord's name, believe in the Lord as Savior, and we'll be saved, right? Even though we frequently sin, like the unbelievers, the Lord won't abandon us. Ma, think about it. When the Lord returns, He will instantly change our image and bring us into the kingdom of heaven. Hey, Ma, why do you still worry that we can't enter the kingdom of heaven? Jing Hao! Mom, we'll go to our room now to pray and repent. Mom, go to bed early, huh? As for the work of the church, let's end our discussion here, and we'll call it a day. All right. Please stay, Sister Zhang. Sister Sue, I've been perplexed by a problem. What is the problem? Say it aloud. We'll all see communication. Many years, we've been congregating and preaching according to Paul's words. For with the heart man believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation, and that, once saved, he is forever saved. So we firmly believe that we've been saved, and we can be called righteous because of our faith, although we still often sin and are far from holy. When the Lord comes, our image will be changed instantly and will enter the kingdom of heaven. Isn't this often the topic of our sermons? That's right, yes. Correct. After listening to such communication, Believers are more confident about entering into the heavenly kingdom, but they neglect to practice the Lord's word and commandments. They seem to increasingly indulge in carnal pleasure without even the slightest fear for God. Just like the unbelievers who live in sin, without true repentance, yet they still comfort themselves. It's fine. Since the Lord's already forgiven my sin, when the Lord comes, He will make me holy instantly. I'll still enter the kingdom of heaven. How could anyone say this kind of faith could please the Lord? Is there any doubt about that? That's right. In the Bible, God said, You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Unless He's holy, no man can see the Lord. That's right. For sinners like us who always sin, yet wait for the Lord to bring us to the kingdom of heaven. I always feel it is impossible. We sin without repentance, yet hope the Lord will bring us to the kingdom of heaven. This is simply our one-sided desire. I'd like to know how you see it. What he says brother Lin is correct. Sense. I feel the same way. Quite a simple matter. Hey, Brother Lin. How can you say that? As the sin offering for man, when the Lord Jesus was crucified, he redeemed us from sin. We were called righteous because of our faith in the Lord. Right. And no one can convict us for our sins. Just like Paul said. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? Amen. As God has already called us righteous, why do we have to worry? that our sinning will keep us from entering the kingdom of heaven. Brother, Brother Son is quite correct. Paul also said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Our faith makes us righteous, and the Lord's grace grants us salvation. Once saved, we are then forever saved. Amen. We don't have to be worried about our sinning, or attaining holiness, or even pleasing the Lord. None of these is a problem. We only have to believe in Paul's word that when the Lord comes, in the blink of an eye, he will instantly change our image and take us to the kingdom of heaven. If we don't possess such confidence, can we be the Lord's believers? Hey, brother, son, sister Hugh, I don't agree with such communication. According to your opinions, it seems like 
If we believe in the Lord, no matter how frequently we sin, the Lord will forgive us. We can enter the kingdom of heaven despite sinning. This is for certain. Please consider the book of Hebrews of the Bible. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. How do your ideas fit with these words? Yes. In addition, the Lord Jesus prophesied, In the last days he'll come to separate the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tares, and the good from the evil servant. If man can be brought into the kingdom of heaven just because he's called righteous by faith, how will the Lord Jesus' prophecy be fulfilled? Yes. Are you able to clarify all these questions? I feel that being brought into the kingdom of heaven can't possibly be as simple as people think. Yes. Yes, indeed. The Lord Jesus said, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. According to the Lord's word, when he returns, he will reward and punish everyone according to their deeds. Whether believers enter the heavenly kingdom or go to hell depends on whether they've practiced the Lord's word and followed his way. But according to your views, regardless of whether or not we follow the Lord's way, whether or not we sin, when He comes, the Lord will make all of us holy instantly and will enter the kingdom of heaven. There's no doubt about this. That's right. Then, being brought to the kingdom of heaven has little to do with our deeds. So, we don't have to practice the Lord's word or keep the Lord's commandments. If so, then, what the Lord Jesus said to give every man according as his work shall be was for nothing? Is this what you all think? Right. The Lord is faithful. He'll certainly reward good and punish evil. That's right. Sister Young, what do you think? I agree with the ideas of Sister Zhang and Brother Li. It's true we're called righteous, due to our belief in the Lord, who forgives our sins. Yet those thus called righteous haven't truly repented and continue to sin. Could this be consistent with the Lord's intention? Such people expect the Lord to bring them into the kingdom of heaven. I don't think this is possible. Why isn't it possible? Yes, yes why? why? The Lord Jesus never said those called righteous, due to their faith, could enter the kingdom of heaven. In regard to what kind of person could enter the kingdom of heaven, the Lord Jesus said it very clearly. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. The Lord Jesus said it quite clearly. Only those who follow the Lord's word and way and obey God's will can enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the Lord Jesus' only condition for the kingdom of heaven. These words are enlightening. But look at our actual states. We haven't practiced much of the Lord's word or kept the Lord's commandments. The most crucial condition to enter the kingdom of heaven. And we do not possess it. True. We still can't stop ourselves from lying and engaging in deception. We still hate and envy others, and our hearts are filled with greed and evil thoughts. When we encounter adversities, we judge the Lord, looking at our behaviors and deeds honestly. Truly, we in no way obey God's will. Can people like us really be changed in a moment and enter the kingdom of heaven? I don't think it's possible. To say that only those who obey the will of God will be transformed instantly and be brought into the kingdom of heaven does seem possible. But for those like us who always sin, to enter the kingdom of heaven how would that fulfill 
the Lord Jesus' word. It's true, yes. I could see what Paul said about the instant change of image being fulfilled on the Lord Jesus' apostles. That seems possible. But it doesn't seem possible that it could apply to us. This is how I see it. But we have all sacrificed for the Lord. We don't practice any of the Lord's words. Thank the Lord. Today's communication and debate is so good. It's been truly enlightening. Thank, Thank the, Lord. the Lord. We've gone by Paul's word and believed we were righteous due to our faith and received salvation by grace. We thought, though we still sinned often, we'd be transformed instantly and be brought into the kingdom of heaven when the Lord comes. For years I've preached like this, unaware of the consequence. What I never thought of is that when brothers and sisters hold such a view, they're tempted to neglect the Lord's word and requirements. They don't practice the Lord's word or keep his commandments. They become increasingly debauched and distant from the Lord, leading a life of sin under the wing yeah. of grace. Yet they still hope to be changed instantly and brought into the kingdom of heaven. If such communication is in line with the Lord's will, why is there no edification in the lives of others? Why does it lead to so many believers becoming ever more depraved? Our communication today clearly exposes these serious problems. This is a good thing. Yes. Yes. In our belief, we wait for the Lord to rapture us based on Paul's word instead of his. Yet we long for the Lord to come and instantly change our images to be holy. This might not be in line with the Lord's intention. Indeed. Then how do we practice the Lord's word to be aligned with his will and enter the kingdom of heaven? This question is critical. We have to seek the truth. Yes. Yeah. Mom, dinner's ready. I'm not hungry. You eat first. I'm going out for a walk. When I read the Lord Jesus' words, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. I feel shame in my heart. The Lord Jesus said it quite clearly. Only those who follow the Lord's word and way and obey God's will can enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the Lord Jesus' only condition for the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters are pessimistic and weak. Their faith grows cold. The church is increasingly desolate. I feel dark in my spirit, unable to feel your presence. My heart hurts immensely. Oh, Lord. These years, although I have been enthusiastic in working and expending for you, 
I still find myself telling lies, and I frequently sin. Can I be brought into the kingdom of heaven by believing in you like this? Oh, Lord, I am so confused. Please inspire and guide me. Oh, Lord, I wish you would appear to me. Do not forsake me. Sister Zhang, do come to the service next week. No need to walk us okay, out. Okay, then. I don't know if Sister Zhang will come to the service next week. I think it's not likely. These past few years, in order to revive the church, we've been working morning to evening, going such distance and suffering so much, without any effect at all. Hmm. The church is still so desolate without the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Brothers and sisters grow more pessimistic and weak. There's fewer people in the congregation. What could this all be about? Even pastors as well as elders cannot show us the way. We can't last like this. Yes. Will we be abandoned by the Lord? I think we need to seek the work of the Holy Spirit, to see in which church the Holy Spirit works with new enlightenment. We cannot be trapped until we die. Yes. You're correct. We should walk around and take a look. I've been thinking about a current problem. Various sects are now desolate. Yet the Eastern Lightning is actually thriving. This is not a simple matter. For years now, the Chinese Communist government persecutes the house churches of the Eastern Lightning. Growing numbers of the Eastern Lightning have been captured. Even pastors and elders are condemning and boycotting the Eastern Lightning. And yet not only is the Eastern Lightning not defeated, it's developing faster and faster. It's true. In about 10 years, it's spread across mainland China. I hear that it's spread overseas. Yeah. Seems to me. If the Holy Spirit weren't at work, the Eastern Lightning wouldn't be so prosperous. It's true. Most of those within the Eastern Lightning were once good sheep of their sects. They understand the Bible. They all witness that Almighty God's the returned Lord Jesus. They've read the word of Almighty God and say that the word of Almighty God is the truth, is the voice of God. I do think the Eastern Lightning, most likely, does come from God. We can no longer listen to the word of the pastors and elders, who tell us to guard against and resist the Eastern Lightning. I'd like us to seek to study the Eastern Lightning, so what do you think? I think we should study the Eastern Lightning. I know some who've accepted the Eastern Lightning. They were pious believers of the Lord, who could cast aside all. They were the head sheep and good sheep of the Church. How are they able to accept it? Indeed. Witnesses for Almighty God say that they've heard the voice of God and conclude the Lord Jesus has returned. Going by this, we should study the Eastern Lightning. Indeed. Since the Lord Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Amen. If we listen to the one-sided views of pastors and elders and don't study the Eastern Lightning, aren't we missing the chance to be raptured by the Lord? If the Eastern Lightning is the appearance and work of the Lord? Yes. yes. Listening to what you've said, the Eastern Lightning is quite possibly the true way. Yes. Mm. Then let's hurry and study it. 
Mm. So it's decided then? Yes. We'll ask those from the Church of Almighty God to visit. Okay. Yes. I used to know this one preacher. I've heard that he has accepted the Eastern Lightning. Let him come to talk and witness for us. So do you agree? That's yes, great. I do. Sounds good. My brothers, we've believed for many years, yet there are problems that we've never understood. Tell us. Although we may preach and work for the Lord, and even suffer, we're still capable of lying, deceiving, and defrauding. Every day we speak in defense of ourselves. So often we're opinionated, ostentatious, and condescending. We live in an endless cycle of sinning and repenting, unable to escape the binding of the flesh, right. We've been in this condition all along. and don't experience and practice the Lord's Word. We haven't lived out any reality of the Lord's Word. Is there any chance we might be brought into the kingdom of heaven? Every day we discuss and debate this matter. We truly cannot see through it. Indeed. There are those who say, despite how we sin or how we are bound by the flesh, the Lord perceives us as sinless. They go by the word of Paul. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. These people assume that the Lord will instantly change our form when he comes and bring us into the kingdom of heaven. There are others who cannot accept this argument and think that those who receive salvation by faith, yet constantly sin, can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Based mainly on the Lord Jesus' word, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, yes. but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Amen. Amen. These are the two points of view, though neither side can express it clearly. Yes. Nor are we able to. Our brothers, please communicate with us. Yes, yes. Communicate please. with us. Fine. Sister Sue. Look at the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen. Amen. Paul's word written in the Bible was inspired by God and is God's word. Amen. Amen. To go by Paul's word and hope that the Lord will instantly change our image so we can enter the kingdom of heaven, this just cannot be wrong. There's nothing unclear about it. Brother Son is right. Paul's word was inspired by God. It's God's word. What have we to worry about? Exactly. We should wait for the Lord to instantly change our image and enter the kingdom of heaven. We'll be fine. Yes. Why make things so complicated? Yes, it's truly that simple. True. It's plain to see. Yeah. Why are you making it so complicated? What you asked are practical questions. The same questions used to bewilder me. Ever since I accepted Almighty God, I've understood the truth and seen through these questions. Let's listen carefully. It could solve our confusion. Our confusion might be solved too. We used to treat the words of apostles like Paul as God's words and would go by Paul's word. As we believed in the Lord and even worked for the Lord and even concerning the Lord's return, we cast aside the words of the Lord Jesus for the words of Paul. Wasn't this a big problem after all? Should we listen to the word of God? Or man. Of course, it should be God's word. Definitely God's word. As for the word of Paul in the Bible, was it the word of God or the word of man? It was definitely the word of God. The word of man. The word of no, yes, it's the, the word, word of God. God. For now, let's set aside the issue of whether it's the word of God or man. What we can be certain of is the Lord Jesus and Jehovah's words in the Bible are God's words. This is something none can deny. Yes, that's beyond doubt. Oh, that's correct. Do any dispute that? It's a fact. The words of apostles like Paul were definitely man's words. Even with the Holy Spirit's enlightenment, 
These were man's words. Absolutely not the word of God. Yes. But why then? Because neither the Lord Jesus nor the Holy Spirit witnessed that the apostles' word was God's word. Even the apostles themselves never claimed that what they had written was in fact God's word. True. Mm. Isn't this a fact? Indeed it is. Hey, that's right. It all makes sense now. The apostles' words were clearly the words of man. Man's words in the Bible are the words of man and can't be viewed as God's word. They can't be the base of interpretation as if they were God's word. Right. Some of man's words came from the Holy Spirit's enlightenment, but some words were surely tainted by human will. They were not the expression of the truth. If we treat the word of man as the truth, it's easy to cause confusion and lead to nowhere. How could it lead to nowhere? Why did thousands of denominations appear throughout the religious community? The cause is that man has interpreted man's word in the Bible as the word of God, giving rise to such serious confusion. Oh, that's why there are so as for entering the kingdom of heaven, we should only go by the Lord Jesus' word. Yes. Because after all, the Lord Jesus is the incarnate Christ. Just the Lord Jesus is the Savior. The word of the Lord Jesus is truth. Only the word of the Lord Jesus has authority. Paul was only a man. He was not Christ. He couldn't express truth. So it was unavoidable that his word was blended with man's will and imagination. Even Paul dared not to say his own word was inspired by God, not to mention his own letters being the word of God. Yeah. Wouldn't it be absurd to regard Paul's word as being the word of God? So this is what it's about. Yes. That does sound reasonable. So regardless of whether or not we are obedient to God's will or qualified to be brought to the kingdom of heaven, we should go by the Lord Jesus' word alone for introspection and pursuit of the truth if we truly wish to find the right answer. Doesn't this sound correct? Indeed. Yes, it does. There is light in the fellowship. We shouldn't listen to Paul. Let's read some of Almighty God's word to know it more clearly. Great. Oh, right. Those are the words expressed by Almighty God. Yes. Almighty God says, Today people believe the Bible is God and that God is the Bible. So too do they believe that all the words of the Bible were the only words God spoke and that they were all said by God. Those who believe in God even think that although all of the 66 books of the Old and New Testament were written by people, they were all given by inspiration of God and a record of the utterances of the Holy Spirit. This is the erroneous interpretation of people, and it does not completely accord with the facts. In fact, apart from the books of prophecy, most of the Old Testament is historical record. Some of the epistles of the New Testament come from people's experiences, and some come from the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. The Pauline epistles, for example, arose from the work of a man. They were all the result of the Holy Spirit's enlightenment, and they were written for the churches, were words of exhortation and encouragement for the brothers and sisters of the churches. They were not words spoken by the Holy Spirit. Paul could not speak on behalf of the Holy Spirit, and neither was he a prophet, much less did he see visions. His epistles were written for the churches of Ephesus, Philadelphia, Galatia, and other churches. And thus, the Pauline epistles of the New Testament are epistles that Paul wrote for the churches, and not inspirations from the Holy Spirit, nor are they the direct utterances of the Holy Spirit. All he said that was edifying and positive to people was right. But it did not represent the utterances of the Holy Spirit, and he could not represent God. It is an egregious understanding 
and a tremendous blasphemy for people to treat the records of a man's experiences and a man's epistles as the words spoken by the Holy Spirit to the churches. His identity was merely that of a working apostle, and he was merely an apostle who was sent by God. He was not a prophet nor a foreteller. So to him, his own work and the lives of the brothers and sisters were of the utmost importance. Thus, he could not speak on behalf of the Holy Spirit. His words were not the words of the Holy Spirit, much less could they be said to be the words of God. For Paul was nothing more than a creature of God and was certainly not the incarnation of God. Amen. His identity was not the same as that of Jesus. The words of Jesus were the words of the Holy Spirit. They were the words of God. For his identity was that of Christ, the Son of God. How could Paul be his equal? If people see the epistles or words like Paul's as the utterances of the Holy Spirit and worship them as God, then it can only be said that they are too indiscriminating. To speak more harshly, isn't this nothing but blasphemy? How could a man talk on behalf of God? And how could people bow down before the records of his epistles and of the words he spoke, as if they were a holy book or a heavenly book? Could the words of God be casually uttered by a man? How could a man talk on behalf of God? True. It's true. The word of God cannot be spoken as the word of man much less can the word of man be spoken as the word of God. A man used by God is not the incarnate God, and the incarnate God is not a man used by God. In this, there is a substantial difference. The words of God incarnate initiate a new age, guide the whole of mankind, reveal mysteries, and show man the direction ahead in a new age. The enlightenment obtained by man is but simple practice or knowledge. It cannot guide the whole of mankind into a new age or reveal the mystery of God himself. God, after all, is God and man is man. God has the substance of God and man has the substance of man. If man views the words spoken by God as simple enlightenment of the Holy Spirit and takes the words of the apostles and prophets as words personally spoken by God, then man is wrong. Regardless, you should never turn right into wrong or speak of the high as the low or speak of the profound as the shallow. Regardless, you should never deliberately refute what you know to be the truth. These words are so clearly spoken. They have clearly Almighty God's word is so clearly spoken. Yes. Paul was clearly not Christ. How could his word possibly be the word of God? That's right. It would just be impossible. Indeed. Even if Paul's word was enlightened by the Holy Spirit, it was still the word of man and absolutely not the word of God. We've believed for so many years, but we couldn't tell man's word from the word of God. It is ever so shameful. Yes. It truly is. Almighty God has so thoroughly revealed for us what is God's word and what is word of man. Not till today have we seen it clearly. Indeed, pastors and elders say the Bible was inspired by God and was God's word. So we treated the words of apostles like Paul and Peter as being the word of God. It's true. It seems that was wrong. Not necessarily. Come now. Don't pastors and elders better grasp the Bible? Of course they do. They all recognize Paul's word as the word of God. Well, what could be so wrong about that? How could all those you really and think elders pastors and elders could represent the Lord? The the Apostles. Paul never said God inspired his letters or that they were God's word. So on what grounds do pastors and elders base their view? Indeed. Almighty God's word is absolutely the truth. What the entire religious community cannot explain clearly Almighty God clarifies in just a few words. These words originate from the Holy Spirit. They're the Holy Spirit's spoken words. Right. The spoken words of the Holy Spirit? 
Why don't I recognize them? Listen for it. In the age of the apostles. In the age of the apostles. Hey, hey! Even those in the age of the apostles wouldn't have regarded Paul's letters as the word of God. That's true. We treated Paul's word as the word of God without any consideration of facts. How could we be so foolish? We were foolish indeed. That's right. Such fellowship is truly clear. There is light in this fellowship. It's worth our study. Brothers and sisters, surely there are many believers who go by the word of Paul while waiting for the Lord to appear. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is simply absurd and preposterous. How Wait, could it be absurd and preposterous? Sound right. preposterous? How could he say such right. to say that? After all, man's word doesn't represent God's, and man's word is tainted with human will. Though at times man's words touch upon the words of God, that doesn't make them God's words. Did the Lord Jesus say anything similar to this statement made by Paul? Did the prophets make similar statements? Did the Holy Spirit witness that Paul's letters were in fact the words of God? Did the revelation of the Holy Spirit tell man to heed Paul's word to meet the Lord Jesus upon his second coming? None of that happened. Right, none at all. We can neither find such fact nor find such testimony. So Paul's word can only be used as a reference, but not a basis. True. true. That is true. True. That sounds this right. This understanding is practical. On waiting for the Lord to bring us to the kingdom of heaven, if we base our views on Paul's word instead of the word of the Lord, embrace fantasy, and wait for the Lord to instantly change our images, it's hard not to make mistakes, and we'll risk being abandoned by the Lord. How could the Lord forsake us? Is this true? Absolutely not. In fact, the specific work that the Lord Jesus will perform when he returns in the last days and how he'll transform man into holiness were all prophesied in the Bible. All this was prophesied in the Bible? In 1 Peter 4.17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. In John 12.47. And 48. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. We have in John 16, 12 and 13. I have yet many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And in John 17, 15 through 19, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. Sanctify them, through your truth, your word is truth. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Amen. From this we see that the return of the Lord in the last days is to express truth, to perform the judgment work beginning with the house of God, and guide man to understand and enter all truths. Only by undergoing the judgment of God's word can we understand the truth, receive cleansing and qualify to enter God's kingdom. Amen. This fellowship is enlightening. Therefore, Paul's words, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. They are inaccurate and quite misleading to man. So all this time it's, we I agree, they're not accurate. Yes. Paul's word is really inaccurate. Right, we've been misled by Paul's word. Many believers wait like this for the Lord to change their images and bring them to the kingdom of heaven. They don't practice the Lord's word at all and don't know how to follow God's will. They merely go by their own enthusiasm 
to work for the Lord while trapped in a cycle of sinning and repenting daily, without ever truly repenting or escaping from the shackles of sinful nature. These believers follow Paul's word to wait for the Lord's appearance and descent. Is this practical? Would the Lord act like this? Listening now to this, I feel the Lord would not act like that. Do you see? Any benefit to be gained from Paul's prophecy to our life entry? There if is no benefit, benefit exists, at all. Exists, none whatsoever. Don't see. There's none. If we heed Paul's word to wait for the Lord's arrival, then will the Lord's prophecy. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Be fulfilled, and how would it be then? Who would actively seek and study the true way, look for the footsteps of God and hear the voice of God? Don't you think this is the case? That's indeed the case. Paul's words are really misleading by God. We have all been just we wish to be yeah. We're so befuddled in our faith. In experiencing Almighty God's work in the last days, we all see one fact. God's made a group of overcomers before the catastrophe. And catastrophe is now imminent. From God's appearance and work in the last days to the disaster's arrival is about 30 years. While it's true this is not that long, it's no way instantaneous as when Paul said, in a blink of an eye, man will become transformed into holiness. Don't you agree? The word of Paul, with its vagueness, feels supernatural to people. For example, in Paul's word, the Lord Jesus' prophecies about hearing the voice of God and being raptured to supper are not mentioned. That's true. The prophecies of the Lord Jesus are particularly practical and consistent with facts. When prophecies come true, we can understand. Hmm. When Almighty God appears and then begins to work and speak, there are many who do hear the voice of God and turn to Almighty God. Their experience of God's judgment and chastisement fulfills the prophecies in the book of Revelation. Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. But Paul's so-called prophecy has never been fulfilled. Moreover, Paul was not a prophet. His so-called prophecy most likely came from human ideas and imagination. Right. The Lord Jesus' prophecies have come to pass, while Paul's haven't. Their differences are quite vast. Indeed, it's like night and day. So it the is. The difference is enormous. Yeah. This is the difference between man's word and God's word. Thanks to this communication, things seem more clear. Therefore, Paul's word cannot be the basis for us to enter the kingdom of heaven. Hmm, yes. If believers heed Paul's word and wait for the Lord to instantly change their images and bring them to the kingdom of heaven, I feel they'll become foolish virgins and be abandoned by the Lord. When we communicate like this, we can see that Paul's word is not accurate. Inaccurate indeed. No one in religion sees through this question. The Lord's work in the last days of perfecting man is now a fact, yet we still can't even grasp Paul's word. When God's prophecies come true, we're able to see them most of the time. It seems that Paul's word wasn't inspired by God. We can no longer believe in Paul's word. It's true. That's right. We can't we can believe never. it. Yes, we need we to be discerning. discerning it. We can't believe Paul's words anymore. All of us can see it. When the prophecies of the Bible become true, most believers of the Lord are able to see it. But there is no way for us to be able to see how Paul's words come true. Indeed. What is the problem? It is enough to say that the word of Paul was definitely not inspired by God and absolutely cannot be regarded as God's word. Yes. Everyone can see that all statements made by the Lord Jesus are clearly becoming true. Isn't this a fact? Yes. This is a fact. It is. Right. Almighty God, in the last days, has come and brought many truths. 
which have been recorded in The Word Appears in the Flesh. Thank the Lord. The Word Appears in the Flesh has been published. After reading these words of Almighty God, many good and head sheep of various sects find Almighty God's Word to be the truth and the voice of God. So they all follow Almighty God. These are the wise virgins who were brought before the throne of God ahead of the catastrophe. They all are attending the marriage supper of the Lamb, fulfilling the Lord Jesus' prophecies. John 16, 12. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. Amen. Amen. Matthew 25, 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. And in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. And, and will sup with him, him and he with me. me. Amen. The Lord Jesus has returned. The Lord's prophecies have been fulfilled. Do you see? The Lord Jesus' prophecies have been fulfilled. Yes. Yes. All words spoken by the Lord, all God's words conveyed by prophets, will indeed be fulfilled without any exception. Yes. Yes, they shall. Just as the Lord Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen. The right is true. Now let's take a look at the words of Paul. Which of them has come true? None at all. Paul's words are harmful. None of None them are all. fulfilled. Indeed. As for whether or not the words spoken by Paul were inspired by God, whether they're the word of God, isn't it all clear now? Yes. yes. It's, it's clear extreme. after this communication. I'm so thing. thankful to the after Lord. After all this, we can distinguish Paul's word. Yeah. So right. Paul's words are man's words. Such fellowship is so clear. If we heed Paul's words and obsessively wait, for the Lord to arrive on the clouds and instantly change our images. Instead of seeking and listening to the Lord's voice and seeking the footsteps of God's work, don't you think it is we who are the foolish virgins? Yes. Can such people meet the Lord and be brought before God? Indeed, it's simply impossible. Brother Chang, Brother Zhang, your communication was so great. My heart was instantly enlightened. Thanks be to God. So Paul's word clearly is not God's word. If we heed Paul's word and wait for the Lord's arrival on clouds to instantly change our images, then our hope to enter the kingdom of heaven will be utterly dashed. Right. We would never meet the Lord. All these years of following the Lord would then be in vain. Yeah. As I reflect on our faith and our expectation for the Lord to bring us into the kingdom of heaven, we had not at all sought the truth in the Lord's word. Yeah. We were purely going by Paul's word to believe in the Lord and wait for the Lord's return. So when the Lord comes to express truth and perform judgment in the last days, we even follow pastors and elders to judge, condemn, and resist Almighty God's work in the last days. We end up falling into darkness and can only await punishment when the disaster comes. Fortunately, I was awakened by your communication and your testimonies. I am willing to study Almighty God's work in the last days. Amen. Thank God. We should yeah. have studied it earlier. We want to study too. Yes. Praise be to God. Did you hear that? This is truly the grace of God, the mercy of God. Amen. Thank the Lord we've heard this. We are all truly Thank blessed. the Lord. Everyone. We can no longer be deceived by pastors and elders. 
We cannot worship Paul nor follow Paul's path. Yes, we shouldn't follow Paul's path any It longer. saddens God far too much. It truly fulfills the words of the Bible. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Fools die for want of wisdom. Amen. We understand thanks to the fellowship. Otherwise, we'd still have been holding a befuddled belief. What's going on? It's all right. They're off. There's danger of arrest for believing in God in China. Hurry and put things away. Quiet, please be quiet. Hurry up, quickly. Brother Chang, Brother Zhang, please go inside that room. Sister Su. What's wrong? Sister Zhang's meeting place was ransacked by police. Sister Zhang, Elder Jia, and others were all arrested. The police will come at any time to seize our church. Sister Zhang's home is near. This meeting place is not safe. We need to move to a safe place. Indeed. Indeed. Let's pack our things quickly. Take Brother Chang and Brother Zhang and leave first. Okay. The rest leave separately. Take care. We gotta get out of here. Let's get out of here. Sister Sue, the government's persecution of house churches grows more severe. Their suppression of the Eastern Lightning is particularly harsh. Things are so tense now. Perhaps we had better not gather today. We should hold off on studying the Eastern Lightning just now. This matter cannot wait. If the CCP government stands, we Christians cannot avoid persecution. We can't let the Chinese Communist Party's persecution stop us from seeking the true way. That's for sure. After hearing today's communication, I feel that the Eastern Lightning's in line with the Bible's prophecies. The Eastern Lightning's quite possibly the Lord's appearance and work. We must figure out if Almighty God is the returned Lord Jesus. This involves whether our faith can bring us to the Kingdom of Heaven. We have to study it, despite danger. You are right. Could entering the kingdom of heaven be free of danger? In a world as dark and evil as this, our faith in and our adherence to Christ is inherently quite dangerous. Yes. Why else would the Lord Jesus say, For whoever will save his life shall lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. Don't you think so? Yeah. Brother Chang, Brother Zhang, lookouts are at the entrance of the hill. It is safer here to congregate. We're able to begin now. Then let us begin. Brothers, sisters, should you have any questions, we invite you to go ahead and ask them. Let's keep communicating. Brother Cheng, Brother Zhang, you've witnessed the Lord Jesus has returned to express truth and perform judgment in the last days. Why didn't I see it? That's right. Why didn't we see it? I still believe that the Lord will return on the clouds I still believe that when the Lord returns, all those who believe in Him will be instantly changed and lifted in the air to meet with the Lord. Amen. Amen. As Paul said, For our conversation is in heaven, from where also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like to His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things to himself. Amen. 
You say the Lord's return is to become flesh appearing as the Son of Man, and to express the truth and perform judgment in the last days. I think it's impossible. Since God is omnipotent, a single word of God created the heavens and earth and allowed the dead to rise again. God is able to turn us into holiness by merely uttering one word. Why does God have to become flesh to express the truth and perform the work of judging and cleansing man? I don't understand how this could be. Please communicate it for me. Can you clarify this matter for us all? God's work is always impossible to fathom. None can clearly explain the prophecies of God to men. Man is only able to understand a prophecy when it's fulfilled. Just what does this mean? It means that none can fathom the wisdom and omnipotence of God. When the Lord Jesus appeared to work in the age of grace, no one could fathom it. When Almighty God does judgment work of the last days in the age of kingdom, none can know of it in advance. Therefore, mankind finds God becoming flesh in the last days to express truth and do judgment work utterly inconceivable. But when God's work is done, the catastrophe will present itself. And then people will know God's word has been completely fulfilled. But by then it will be too late. They'll wail and grind their teeth amid the catastrophe. We shouldn't wait for disasters to strike to start the We better not miss our chance. We must study it. How God does his work of judgment within the last days to cleanse and save man. How he makes a group of overcomers, how he makes his first fruits, will be even more clear after we read Almighty God's word. We'd like to hear more of Almighty God's word. Almighty God says, you should see that the will and the work of God are not as simple as the creation of the heavens and earth and all things. For the work of today is to transform those who have been corrupted, who have grown extremely numb, and to purify those who were created, then worked on by Satan. Not to create Adam or Eve, much less to make the light or create all manner of plants and animals. His work now is to make pure all that has been corrupted by Satan so that they may be regained and become his possession and become his glory. Such work is not as simple as man imagines the creation of the heavens and earth and all things to be. And it is not akin to the work of cursing Satan to the bottomless pit as man imagines. Rather, it is to transform man, to turn that which is negative into the positive and to take into his possession that which does not belong to him. This is the inside story of this stage of God's work. You must realize it and should not oversimplify matters. The work of God is unlike any ordinary work. Its marvel cannot be conceived by the mind of man and its wisdom cannot be attained by such. God is not creating all things and he is not destroying them. Rather, he is changing all of his creation and purifying all things that have been defiled by Satan. Therefore, God shall commence work of great magnitude, and this is the total significance of the work of God. From these words, do you believe that the work of God is so simple? It's truly not the work simple. Of God is not at all simple. The flesh of man has been corrupted by Satan and most deeply blinded and profoundly harmed. The most fundamental reason why God works personally in the flesh is because the object of his salvation is man who is of the flesh and because Satan also uses the flesh of man to disturb the work of God. 
The battle with Satan is actually the work of conquering man. And at the same time, man is also the object of God's salvation. In this way, the work of God incarnate is essential. Amen. Amen. Satan corrupted the flesh of man, and man became the embodiment of Satan, and became the object to be defeated by God. In this way, the work of doing battle with Satan and saving mankind occurs on earth, and God must become human in order to do battle with Satan. This is work of the utmost practicality. Amen. 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 This is so great. Praise God. It's incredible. Brother Chang. Hmm? Might I read the word of Almighty God? Great. Almighty God says, Earliest mankind was in the hands of God. But because of Satan's temptation and corruption, man was bound up by Satan and fell in the hands of the evil one. Thus, Satan became the object to be defeated in the work of God's management. Because Satan took possession of man, and because man is the stock of all God's management, if man is to be saved, then he must be snatched back from the hands of Satan which is to say that man must be taken back after having been held captive by Satan. Satan is defeated through changes in man's old disposition that restore his original sense. And in this way, man who has been taken captive can be snatched back from the hands of Satan. If man is freed from the influence and bondage of Satan, Satan will be shamed man will ultimately be taken back, and Satan will be defeated. And because man has been freed from the dark influence of Satan, man will become the spoils of all of this battle. And Satan will become the object that will be punished once this battle has finished, after which the entire work of mankind's salvation will have been completed. Amen. It has such authority. In the work of the last days, the word is mightier than the manifestation of signs and wonders. And the authority of the word surpasses that of signs and wonders. The word reveals all the corrupt dispositions in the heart of man. You are unable to recognize them on your own. When they are revealed to you through the word, you will naturally come to the realization. You will not be able to deny them, and you will be utterly convinced. Is this not the authority of the word? This is the result achieved by the present work of the word. Therefore, man cannot be fully saved from his sins by the healing of sickness and casting out of demons, and cannot be fully made complete by the manifestation of signs and wonders. The authority to heal and cast out demons only gives man grace, but the flesh of man still belongs to Satan, and the corrupt satanic disposition still remains within man. In other words, that which has not been made clean still belongs to sin and filth. Only after man has been made clean through words can he be gained by God and become sanctified. Amen. Amen. Through this work of judgment and chastisement, man will fully come to know the filthy and corrupt substance within him, and he will be able to completely change and become clean. Only in this way can man be worthy to return before the throne of God. Amen. Amen. All the work done this day is so that man can be made clean and be changed. Through judgment and chastisement by the word, as well as refinement, man can cast away his corruption and be made pure. Amen. Amen. Praise God.
This is indeed this the path. This is God's voice. It's just so practical. Like yes. Brother Chung, I'd also like to read God's words. Great. Oh, wonderful. Thanks be to God. In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, reveal the essence of man, and dissect his words and deeds. These words comprise various truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out the normal humanity as well as the wisdom and disposition of God, and so on. These words are all focused on the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, those words that reveal how man spurns God are spoken in regard to how man is an embodiment of Satan and an enemy force against God. When God does the work of judgment, he does not simply make clear the nature of man with just a few words, but carries out revelation, dealing, and pruning over the long term. Such manner of revelation, dealing, and pruning cannot be substituted with ordinary words, but with the truth that man does not possess at all. Only such manner of work is deemed judgment. Only through such judgment can man be persuaded, be thoroughly convinced into submission to God, and gain true knowledge of God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God and the truth about his rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God, of the purpose of God's work, and of the mysteries that could not be understood by man. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the roots of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment. For the substance of such work is actually the work of opening up the truth, way, and life of God to all those who have faith in him. This work is the work of judgment done by God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It is the Praise work God. Of judgment. Right. Brother, I'd like to read Almighty God's words. That'd be great. Thank God. God does the work of judgment and chastisement so that man may know him and for the sake of his testimony. Without his judgment of man's corrupt disposition, man would not know his righteous disposition that allows no offense and could not turn his old knowledge of God into a new one. For the sake of his testimony and for the sake of his management, he makes his entirety public, thus enabling man to achieve the knowledge of God and change his disposition and bear resounding testimony to God through God's public appearance. Amen. Amen. Change is achieved in the disposition of man through different kinds of God's work. Without such changes in man's disposition, man would be unable to bear testimony to God and could not be after God's heart. Changes in man's disposition signify that man has freed himself from Satan's bondage, has freed himself from the influence of darkness, and has truly become a model and specimen of God's work. Praise God. Has truly become a witness of God Amen. and someone who is after God's heart. Amen. Amen. At last we understand everything so the judgment what it truly means. Please allow me to read Almighty God's words. Great. Those who are able to stand firm during God's work of judgment and chastisement during the last days, that is, during the final work of cleansing, will be those 
who will enter into the final rest with God. Therefore, those who enter into rest will all have broken free of Satan's influence and been obtained by God only after having undergone his final cleansing work. These people who have been ultimately obtained by God will enter into the final rest. Amen. Amen. The essence of God's work, of chastisement and judgment, is to cleanse humanity. And it is for the day of final rest. Otherwise, the whole of humanity will not be able to follow their own kind or enter into rest. This work is humanity's only path to enter into rest. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Only God's through word is so can great. Be purified. Having heard Almighty God's word, how do you feel now? Almighty God's word truly unveiled the mystery and truth. It's profound. It's unlike anything that we have heard in our many years of belief in the Lord. That's, That's right. right. Although they're not written in the Bible, these words do reveal the mystery of God's work. Yes, they really do. Other than God, who can express the truth and unfold the mystery of God's work? Amen. Amen. The word of Almighty God does seem to be the voice of God. It is hard to understand, but hearing it a few times and communicating with others helps. True. Hey, understanding the voice of God's not an easy feat. This is no ordinary person. This is definitely a wise virgin. Everything's right, so right. I we agree. should all be the wise so virgins. Indeed. Indeed. That's great. God becomes flesh in the last days so as to express truth and do judgment work, to cleanse and perfect man, instead of transforming him with a single word. Is there truth and mystery within? Yes. The truth and mystery within is too deep. Yeah. Was there anything you understood in the words of Almighty God? It's hard for me to express <sighs> it in words. I can't My brothers, it clearly. please communicate some more. Yes, please continue. Yes, please, yes. please continue. communicate with us. How God cleanses and perfects man by his judgment work in the last days is absolutely not as simple as what we imagine. With one word, the Lord Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. But for God to cleanse and transform a mankind that's been corrupted by Satan to resist and condemn God into a mankind that understands and obeys and truly worships God. To transform a mankind that's been corrupted into living devils for millennia, into a mankind that has truth and humanity all within 20 or 30 years, it is a process of battling Satan. Is this a simple matter? No, it's not. If with just one word God raises the dead and transforms our body, could this humiliate Satan? In the last days, mankind has been corrupted by Satan for millennia. Satan's nature and disposition have been ingrained in man. Mankind is arrogant, selfish, filled with deceit, evil, and greed. For fame and fortune, they plot against, deceive, and even slaughter each other. Mankind loathes and detests the truth and has been an enemy of God from early on. Mankind is the ilk of Satan, resisting and betraying God. God's salvation for mankind is actually a battle with Satan. Amen. Amen. Just as Almighty God says, the flesh of man has been most profoundly corrupted and has become something which opposes God, which even openly opposes and denies the existence of God. This corrupt flesh is simply too intractable. And nothing is more difficult to deal with or change than the corrupt disposition of the flesh. Satan comes into the flesh of man to stir up disturbance and uses the flesh of man to disturb the work of God and impair the plan of God. And thus man has become Satan and the enemy of God. For man to be saved, he must first be conquered it is because of this that God rises to the challenge and comes into the flesh to do the work he intends to do and to battle with Satan. His aim is the salvation of mankind who has been corrupted 
and the defeat and annihilation of Satan, which rebels against him. Amen. He defeats Satan through his work of conquering man and simultaneously saves corrupt mankind. Thus God solves two problems at once. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. Such wisdom. The work of God is such is the work of God. God is yes. so God defeats Satan. God wants to transform a mankind befouled by Satan against God into a mankind that obeys and is compatible with God. The difficulty of this is enormous. It is much more difficult than when God created the heavens and the earth and all things. The creation of all things from nothingness God has accomplished with just one word. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise be to God. God. But to cleanse and to transform a corrupted mankind. God must first become flesh, and then he'll express many truths to judge and cleanse man. Amen. For us to experience the judgment of God, cast away corruption, and be cleansed, requires a process that takes much time. It's also the process of God's battle with Satan. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Thanks be to God. Satan intentionally corrupts human beings into living devils. If God turns these devils into human beings, Satan will learn its place. Therefore, God wisely follows his original plan by becoming flesh so as to battle with Satan's ilk. How does he battle? First, he utters the truth to conquer man, and then he cleanses and perfects man with the truth. When we understand the truth and know God, we will clearly see the fact of our corruption by Satan and begin to detest Satan, forsake Satan, and curse Satan. Finally, we'll rebel against Satan and fully turn to God. Amen. So that God rests mankind back from Satan's grasp. Yes. Those who are saved are God's spoils from having defeated Satan. Amen. Praise God. Only by working like this is God able to humiliate and to defeat Satan. This is the inside story of God's work of judgment in the last days. Do we all now clearly see the truth of God's work in the last days? Yes. I understand much better now. Yes. Yes. Although God's work in the last days lasts just 20 or so years, He still has made a group of overcomers, fulfilling the prophecies in the book of Revelation. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow, the Lamb wherever He goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Amen. This group of people, this group of overcomers, are the first fruits gained and enjoyed by God. Thanks be to God. So compared to the history of mankind, isn't 20 or so years just a blink of an eye? Yes, it is. I see that now. No one could deny this. The Bible says, One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If it says that, when the Lord returns in the last days, He'll change our body within a moment in the blink of an eye, it is appropriate to apply this to the effects achieved by God's work in the last days. It can thus be received. Amen. Amen. This is indeed the right way to comprehend it. However, we can quite easily interpret Paul's words as those who believe in the Lord will instantly be transformed and lifted to the air to meet the Lord when he returns. So we idly waited for the Lord to descend on clouds, transform, and rapture us. Isn't Paul's word? Dangerously misleading? No yeah, yeah, it's extremely misleading. It's, it's in trap, right? Indeed. No way. Way. Everyone, we can't apply our own notions to the work of God. God's work is extremely practical at each step. It is visible and tangible. Amen. The incarnate Almighty God is the practical God Amen. who comes to the world to save man by uttering the truth. If we don't accept, aren't we rebelling against and resisting God? Right. 
How then could we possibly receive the praises and blessings of God? Don't you agree? Yes, we need to accept Almighty God. If we still don't accept, are we resisting God? Today's communication has been so good. I understand one more thing. It was easy for God to create all things with one word. But God's judgment work in the last days for cleansing man and making man perfect is not simple at all. Right. It seems that we were all naive about the instant change described in Paul's word. God's work is unfathomable. Yes. yes. It is impossible to accept God's work in the last days without hearing the testimonies of man. Yes. 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 Only after hearing your communication about Almighty God's word do I realize that God's work is practical and not at all supernatural. God's work is visible, tangible, and easy to experience. That's right. As in the age of grace, when the Lord Jesus succeeded in God's redemption work through crucifixion, we just need to accept, pray, and repent to the Lord Jesus and to plead for his forgiveness. Then our sins will be forgiven. Right, right. right. We'll immediately enjoy the presence of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. Whatever it is that we pray to God for will be granted. We've each experienced it in our belief in the Lord for all these years. Right. God has become flesh in the last days and expressed many truths in his work to judge and cleanse man Thanks be to and God. to fully resolve the sinful nature within man. God's work is so very practical. Yes. Right. It's a shame we've believed all these years and still don't know God's work and still don't fully grasp the Lord's redemption work in the Age of Grace. We thought that the Lord Jesus had completed the salvation work for man. We were just waiting for the Lord to arrive and bring us to the kingdom of heaven. We are so foolish and ignorant. While hearing witness to the return of the Lord Jesus to do his judgment work in the last days, we were still defining God's work with our imagination. We are so arrogant and conceited and completely void of sense. People like us, who are so ignorant of God's work and full of notions and imaginings about God, yet desire to be brought into the kingdom of heaven without experiencing God's judgment and cleansing in the last days. Aren't we all just deluding ourselves? Brother Chang, Brother Zhang, all your testimonies have been great. Thank God. Thank God. This is truly God's blessing for us all. Amen. Amen. I have now fully determined that Almighty God is the returned Lord Jesus. Amen. I now formally accept the work of Almighty God in the last days. Amen. 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 Sister Sue. Welcome. The Church of Almighty God welcomes you. Thank, Thank God. God. Thank God. Amen. We are truly blessed. Thanks be to God. I'll also believe in Almighty God, 
Don't leave me behind when the Lord comes for us. You won't be that left behind. I accept too. I also accept. I also accept. We all accept. Can you believe it? We've met the Lord and are at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Yes. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks be to God. Praise be to God. God. Praise be to God. Yes, Thank God. Finally, the day we have waited for is here. We are truly blessed. Only this cleansing removes unrighteousness. This chastisement and judgment brings light to man's disobedience, thereby separating. Saved from the dead And those who will remain From those who will not The essence of judgment And chastisement Is to cleanse man For his final rest People won't.